All right, I'm filming this for like the fifth time. Jeep's fixed, finally. This is the update. Dealer had to do it, I couldn't do it. Ended up uh, being solenoid pack again. Apparently when the transmission shop in Tallahassee replaced the solenoid pack, it shorted out two other major systems within the Jeep, the PCM and TIPM, which would be the power control module and the totally integrated power module, which is uh, weird. Can't believe uh, that many systems would fail because of one system failing. And they say it's because it was an aftermarket solenoid pack, which is what killed the other two systems because it shorted shortly after being in or during install and then shorted the other two systems. So I had to bite the bullet, had to have all that done, talked to the techs about it. What they said seemed to be right. The, you, the way they d diagnosed it seemed to be right. They didn't just plug it into the computer and the computer say, oh, this stuff doesn't work. So that was $3,000. I know. Shouldn't have taken it to the dealer. If I could could get away, if I could have gotten away with it, I would have. I would have not taken it to the dealer. I'd have done it myself, but I didn't know how to do it. Uh, even if I did it myself, it had to go to the dealer anyways to have it programmed or flashed, as they would say. Um, and I've read too many forums where guys tried to do it themselves, ordered one, and they went through two or three different computers before they finally gave up and let the dealer do it. And I wasn't willing to spend the money those three or four times before I just let the dealer do it. So I just decided I needed it done. I wanted it done. I was tired of dealing with it. I was starting to really hate my Jeep because I wasn't able to drive it for, you know, over two years. It just sat. Well, now it's fixed. For the most part. Um, I did find a couple things with it that uh, are wrong and then need to be fixed that I haven't addressed because I wasn't able to. Um, we finally uh, got settled in over here. I graduated school. We moved back. Now I'm settled in. So I've gotten a job that I can afford to fix things on the Jeep now. So that's what we're going to do. Um... I don't know if I had said so in one of the previous videos, but I had replaced the bearings and the gears in the front differential, and I finally was able to get 500 miles break in on those and replace that gear fluid. Also did the rear while I was under there, also did the engine oil. Well, while doing these, I found other problems with the Jeep, and I'm going to show all that to you right now. I'm also going to show you some of the stuff that we're going to do to fix it today. Uh, probably not in this video. I'll probably make them separate videos, but I think they're going to come out at the same time. I just didn't want a 30 minute long video. Um, some of the problems that I found were the shock bushings were fried. The rear one I can jiggle, I'll show you that. Uh, the sway bar end links were done. The sway bar bushing is done, the front and rear. The, the end links in the rear are aftermarket, they're new, they're adjustable. Uh, what I had done was bought adjustable end links for the rear and then moved the rears to the front. And then the ones in the front, are they're done now. I, I can show you that right now. Let me see if I can get this on the camera. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but they are definitely ovaled out on both ends, both bushings. Um, the rubber on them's trash, you can tell. So those are trash. I have the sway bar over here. The bushings on it are also trashed. I'm sure you guys have seen a million of those. You don't need to see it again. Now I'll show you the shocks. Now, I'm not positive, but I believe these are rough country. I believe that's what was on it when I bought it. It was just a two and a half inch rough country lift. Um, as you can tell, the bushings on it are also not in great shape. You can see where it's been puking fluid out. It's got a nice little ring here, but you can see I have to manually pull it out and can, and it does not push itself back out once in. So these are done. Both of them all that I've taken off so far are like that. So. I ordered new ones. I finally have a job. I can afford things now. So, ordered new bushings. Or not new bushings, I ordered new struts and shocks. So those are trash. For those wondering, what did you get? Well, I got Bilsteins, of course. These are the Bilstein 5100s. Um, they're a good dual purpose shock. On-road, off-road, they're stiff. These are the new shocks. Uh, half of it's done. I wanted to head and go ahead. I wanted to go ahead and do that side, 
so that I could make sure that I could reuse the hardware that was on there. I was going to make sure that I didn't break anything or if anything was bent from the shocks being all jacked up. But here are the new shocks. They're very hard to compress, and the moment that you start to compress them, they want to come right back out. Uh, that was probably the hardest part of the install was compressing them to get them in place. It was not easy. Um, I was very sore afterwards, but I did it. But here they are. These are very high quality shocks. You can just tell the build quality between these and the Rough Countries is, it's not even comparable. They're, they're amazing. Um, and they were cheap, believe it or not, or cheaper. They're, they're, I wouldn't say cheap. Uh, I picked up all four for $318, no taxes, free shipping. I had them within four days. You know, I didn't have to go through the bull crap of, oh, which ones fit my Jeep? Which ones are best for my lift? I just ordered the 5100s, and then they called me the next day and said, hey, you know, we noticed you ordered them. What's the application? You know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, it's a 2010 Wrangler, unlimited, four-wheel drive, two-and-a-half-inch lift. And the guy was like, all right, fantastic. I'm going to send them out to you. So, shouts to fourwheeldrive.com. That was awesome. Uh, I had them three days after talking to that guy. They sent me tracking information and all of that. It, it worked out great. I couldn't believe it. The service was amazing. Check out fourwheeldrive.com. Uh, I ordered mine for $318. The That was the cheapest I could find them. Other places had them for like $345, plus you're going to pay taxes on them, and fourwheeldrive.com pays your taxes. Um, so I know some of their stuff's not as cheap as other places, but for the Bilsteins, for the 5100s, they were. 318 was the cheapest I could find them, so if you're looking for some good quality shocks, check those guys out. This is not a plug for them. I, they didn't sponsor any of these videos or anything like that as you guys can tell this is a small channel I just was really happy with the quality of the shocks I was happy with the service I was happy with the turnaround so I figured I'd let these these guys get a little shout just because of that so here are the new shocks these have a lower and upper bushing Okay, so this was one of the first things that I noticed was wrong with the old shocks. This is a new Bilstein. You can see no movement as I jiggle it. We'll come over here to one of the shocks that was in. And as I jiggle, you can see how much movement I have down here. This side wasn't nearly as bad as the other side, but it is still as bad. So that's that was what first brought me to the uh, fact that my shocks were toast. So replacing those next I don't know if I mentioned already or not we're gonna do the control arm bushings Let's see if I can get the camera set up I'm not an expert at this you can hear that I don't even think it's attached to the bushing any longer this is the only one making that much racket but that doesn't work I mean I'm gonna have to replace that so we're gonna go bushings for these I don't really want to change the control arms um, I just got to figure out if I can get a model number off of these that way I can order the correct bushings. But that's what we're on right now. Uh, we're going to do the shocks today because I have them. So I'm going to walk you guys through what I'm doing. You know, I might not do it exactly how you think it should be done. I'm not an expert. I never claim to be an expert. This is just what I know. This is how much I know how to do. So we're going to do the shocks today and um, that'll be on the next video. Okay, so we'll start off with the front shocks. Um, Something that you'll notice if you're removing your shocks is if you just put a box wrench on this nut up here and turn it, you're going to turn this whole shaft. Uh, luckily, this set has a spot up top where I can fit a crescent wrench and stop it from spinning. The Bilsteins don't. Uh, they do have an area up top that you can pinch on with some vice grips and hold them. But uh, luckily, it, it didn't tear up the other side. That's what I was worried about was that the shaft would get all jacked up, but it didn't even bother it. So... We got lucky there, but we'll go ahead and take this out. You'll notice here at the end I had to switch over and start using a vice grip, only because you run out of room on top to turn off the nut with a crescent wrench. So switched over to the vice grip. This is the same way we're going to put the Bilsteins in. Um, this vice grip's real nice. It doesn't have real jagged teeth to put marks in that shaft. So top nut is out. We could probably, yeah, we can compress that down by hand. I mean, you can see how 
shitty that is, how easy it goes up and down. And there's a little washer up on the top. Flip my hands so you can see that. And we take that out. Now we're going to move down to the bottom. Okay, so here's the lower half of that strut. It is an 18 on both sides. You will need one on both sides. It does try and turn off. Um, I'm using a 3 8 and a half inch because I only have two 18s. One for 3 8 and one for a half inch. Um, I sprayed these yesterday with some uh, PB Blaster to make them a little easier to undo. So I recommend that for the top especially because it's so rusty up there worse than it is down here so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and we'll get the new ones in all right so here's the strut we just took out you can see how easy this is I don't know if you can hear the fluids inside squishing hopefully you guys can hear that you can see where whoever installed it used one with real sharp teeth and they gouged it so these weren't quality to start with so we're going to replace them with something a lot better if anybody's wondering this is what the bushing end looked like so the one thing i can fault bill stein for is their instructions they are pretty much non-existent with the fronts you're going to get one of these two of them actually and then you're going to get two of these now just from what I found online, these little washers should not cup these bushings. So they should be up and then like that. And then the bushings are supposed to nose together on that tip and then that top bushing. Something like that. But their instructions are really hard. They basically just show you every single shock they've ever made and then expect you to just cipher through it and find the ones that you ended up with but this is what I found online it worked on the other side uh, this is the only way you can thread it this way because otherwise you have no threads to put that top nut on but we'll go ahead and start getting this together also misspoke with the vice grips to hold the Bilsteins there is a hex nut or not a hex nut but like an allen key insert on the top the ones that I took off didn't have that. They had just a little flat piece to hold it. These have one. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room to get it in, as you can see. But it does go in. So that's what we're working on right now. Uh, let me get the front one in, and then we'll show you some stuff on the back one. It's a miracle. Last shock to come out. Still works just a little bit, though. I don't think that's going to work. Bushing's still shot, but it still has a little bit of spring left in its life, which is amazing. All right, so the rears are a little different. You got your lower mount here, but up top, I don't know if you can see, but right here you're going to have two holes. The top is like this. So what I do is put the top in first and then compress to get this. Otherwise, there's really no way to pull down to get that in place. Really, you wouldn't be able to do it anyways because it would point out over here. So we're going to put the top in loose. I wouldn't tighten it since you're going to be wiggling it and pulling to get the bottom in. So uh, I'm going to start with that now, and uh, we'll check back with you in just a second. So if you can believe it, the camera ran out of battery life. So I finished it up and uh, did a couple other things. I'm going to show you what we worked on. Uh, I'll show you the finished product. Uh, we took it for a test drive, and the new ride quality is unbelievable. Um, as they do say, the Bilsing 5100s are firm, so you're going to feel a lot more of what's hitting everything on the ground. Um, but I like it. It makes the Jeep feel more planted. Before, it felt like it was floating around on a cloud and out of control. Um, but it's much, much better now. So uh, we're going to show you some of the stuff we've been working on and uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing that you, know, you might have the same issue with your Jeep and, and you want to take care of it as well. So uh, let's get to looking at it. Well, here's that last one in and installed. Um, I didn't mention this earlier in the video, and it's one of those things that you don't notice until you start editing. Um, the bottom nuts should be 56 foot-pounds, front and rear. 
the front top ones should be 20 foot pounds but you'll never be able to get anything on there to test that so one of the other things that was bothering me that i decided to fix was the surface rust uh, where you have a lot of your paint chipping or scratching from wheeling and you know you get a little bit of surface rust behind it you know nothing that's structural just a visual you know something that's not appealing so i bought some matte black paint that is a rust uh, inhibitor and i did some painting I think it came out really, really good. You can see on the rails here where it's done, right around the shock. I even got the steering gear box. It had some real bad oxidation on it all through here, down to the track bar mount that you can see I booger welded a washer on there because it had ovaled out. I'm gonna fix that better later. Also did the rail here. All the way down. I think it came out really, really good. I'm very happy with it. I did it on both sides. So, and it was something really, really easy. I barely even prepped for it. Um, I'm expecting to have to do it again very soon. So, I just you know bought $4 spray cans and got in there and was careful and covered up the things I didn't want to get paint on and you know I maybe have like 45 minutes in the whole project so if that's something you're looking to do it's really really easy and it really improves the look of the vehicle a lot of the guys out there don't care that you know if as long as it wheels right you know I like it to wheel right but I'd also like to look okay too I don't want to look I don't want it to look like it's falling apart riding down the road well guys that's a wrap today on Jeeping Garage um, we got all the shocks installed did a little bit of painting um, Sorry I didn't get to film much of it. I didn't really get to structure this the way I was hoping to. The camera dying kind of put a wrench in things. Um, I'm going to order the control arm bushings probably in the next week or so. And I'm going to make a video about installing those. Um, probably just going to you know go with one thing at a time. I, uh, you know, Money's not abundant, but these are all things that need to be fixed that I've been ignoring. So you know, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we hope to see you next time.